know that anxiety is something that many of the many of us have been through many of us are facing it many of us teenagers are going through a lot of anxiety and there's nothing wrong with it because the world is tuned like that amen it is tuned to make you anxious amen if you see some uh, uh, some advertisement and you look up there and you see okay i don't have that right and or if you are on instagram and facebook you see all your friends are they are on cruise they are on vacation and you are sitting at home doing nothing and you're like oh god everyone's life is happening and my life is so boring and that's how the world is created and the world is tuned and it ke- it causes a lot of anxiety in Ma- in mark chapter 3 verses 27 jesus said no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless first he binds the strong man and he then he will plunder his house this is a verse that we took last week and this is exactly what the devil does what he does he doesn't he cannot come into our house and steal our joy he cannot come into our home and take from us what the lord has given us but when he binds us amen when he binds us that's when we are not able to protect our peace protect our joy he steals it from us and that's where we have to be alert that the devil doesn't bind us and take the best things out of our life today's meditation is from uh, sam chapter 139 verses 23 and 24 here is david says search me o god and know my heart try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting i used to always wonder why is david talking about anxieties here when i used to grow up and i used to think lord maybe he should say search me oh lord and know my heart and try me and know my my sins and help me out of it but you know many a times it's not the sins sins doesn't start straight away nobody becomes a sinner straight away no one becomes a murderer one day no one becomes a thief one day i mean it's not like anyone they they decide to become something the same day it is all started in some place amen it all originated in the thought process it all originated with some experience it all originated in some part of your life and it developed into that part amen amen the thief is not formed on a day but it was somewhere some place it started and god is asking that place and that's where david is saying lord search me and know my heart try me and know my anxieties amen why anxiety if you see anxiety is something that exists i mean how many of you have anxiety i mean definitely all oh, yes i i know many of us and you don't want to lift up even to lift that hand you're anxious right you know you feel the anxiety to come up and say testimony oh if the heart starts pumping fast i mean even if like you know even i know so much some of you get, when you came up for testimony it it was tough for you i mean but praise god for coming up and sharing what the lord did in your life i mean there are you know anxieties can happen in big and small ways when you're standing in buffet and you're standing and you suddenly see the chicken pieces are all going <laughs> oh my god will i get it before you know anxiety happens in different ways you are at home and your uh, your your cell phone battery is coming low and then some of you can get anxiety over the cell phone battery amen you're you're on social media and you see suddenly okay my battery is going down and okay i have to run for getting the charger i mean if your kids you have some good food in your in your pantry and suddenly it is getting low they're like mom it's getting low please go get more right they get anxiety they get ans- anxious over things which you think that is for you and the best thing can go away from you and you don't want that to go away amen some of us can get anxious when the toothpaste is getting low you're running low amen and it's not there in the pantry i mean these are small things but it causes anxiety amen i mean if you're driving and i had electric car so i used to remember the moment the range goes down that it's not like petrol i have to drive a distance so i used to get ans- anxious thinking god i don't want to be on the road standing there especially in minnesota weather never uh, so there are so many ways you can get anxious 
I mean, why does anxiety happen? The anxiety is that it is the fear of losing out. If you, if that's the term that has been developed right now. They call it FOMO, the fear of losing out. Why is that? Because you are afraid that you're losing out on the best part of life. Amen? But it's within your reach. You're just afraid that you would lose it. I mean, if you look at David's life in, John, in Psalm chapter 23, verses 1, he says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Why does he say that? He says the way he does this is by keeping the Lord as his shepherd. How does he overcome his anxiety? By keeping the Lord as his shepherd. Because when the, Lord, when the shepherd is my guide, he has provided me for Provided me with everything. He has provided me with everything. He meets my every need. He takes care of me. You know, I'm not left wanting. Amen. I'm not left wanting because he takes care of everything. And he says, I am not anxious anymore because I can see my shepherd and I know he's taking care of me. Amen. Amen, church. You know, what does the devil do, do is that the devil would always play with our wants. Amen? What is a want? Want, if you, if you go up on the dictionary, it says a desire to possess something. Amen? A desire to possess something, desire to do something, or a desire to say something, or something you haven't done till now. Amen? If, is anyone feeling anxious today? I heard like one preacher was saying, he was preaching in church and one lady ran out and she was anxious. She got anxious listening to the message. Please don't get anxious here. Amen. Just calm down. Take a deep breath if you want to. <laughs> so, the devil creates in you a thought that you could have something and it's within your reach if you would reach out and get it. If you look at Eve, what happened? Eve and Adam was placed in the Garden of Eden with every needed thing. Amen. They had everything. But then the serpent comes and says, Hey, listen, there's one thing that you're missing. And that is the fruit that you're not eating. Because when you eat, you get something that you don't have. Amen? Amen? And suddenly there's a desire inside of her. Okay, I want to have that which I don't have. Amen? Exactly that's when our anxiety start when we start booing and thinking, God, I want to have that. I want to do this. I want to be part of that which everyone has and I don't have this. And that's where David says, the Lord is my shepherd. I am not going to let a want come into my life because I got all my needs. I'm happy with my life. I'm blessed with my life. I'm rejoicing where God has placed me and I'm enjoying. I shall not want. But sadly, as we know, as Eve did, as we always do, we are all children of Eve. And what happened is that she fell for the desire. Amen? She fell for the desire and she lost the privilege of living in the Garden of Eden. And we came all into this fallen world. But is that wrong to have a desire? Amen? Is it wrong to have a desire? No, it's not because you were created to have a desire, right? See, when you were created, God created you as a package. All those things that you are is God created you, right? Amen? Amen? I mean, God created you and God created you the way you are. I mean, you don't have to feel guilty about the way you are or the way you do things. No, you are the way God created. You're perfect. Amen? You're masterpiece. Praise the Lord. Amen. Some of us are a little more anxious. Some of us are less anxious. Some of us are a little more cool. Some of us are not that. Amen. But that's okay. That's the way God created you. Rejoice and celebrate the differences that God has created in you. Amen. <laughs> Husbands and wives, when you got together, you never thought your husband was right like that or your wife was like that. Amen. But uh, if, you know, then you keep the Lord as your shepherd. Amen. 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 We know that we haven't, we all didn't get perfect husbands and wives, and neither are you perfect husband and wife, right? <laughs> Let me complete the statement. Everyone is in the same pool. Amen. Neither are you, or none of us are perfect, but the Lord is a shepherd and he is perfect. Amen. He has met our need in each other. Praise the Lord. 
Praise Lord, He has met a need in each other. And He will continue to meet that need as long as we keep the Lord as a shepherd. But it's nothing wrong to have a desire. Amen. As scripture says in, in Psalms chapter 37 verses 4 and 5, He said, Delight yourself also in the Lord and He shall give you the desires of your heart. Amen. The desires are not wrong. Desires are exactly how God created you. Amen. Desires are exactly how God created you. Some of have desires right from the childhood. Children have desires as they grow up. Like, you know, they want to do, become something. They want to reach a goal. They want to do something. And there's nothing wrong in that. That's absolutely right. But then the scripture goes to the next verse. He says, like, commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him and He shall bring it to pass. Amen. Amen. How do you fulfill your desire? Is by committing your way to the Lord. Amen. As we read in Proverbs again, commit your ways to the Lord and He shall make you make your path successful. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's how we let we go to the desire where God has placed us. So what happens when you are with a desire, longing for it, looking for it, and you are walking towards it? What do you do? You commit your path to the Lord. Amen. There is nothing wrong in a guy or a man desiring to marry a woman. Amen. But if he, if he desires to marry her and she, he, he decides, okay, I'm going to marry this woman and he kidnaps her, then that's wrong. Amen. The way to get married, there is a way to that. You have to commit your way. How are you going get, to get married to her? Amen. Amen. There is a way. Amen. There is a, as you say, like the way to the man's uh, heart is through his stomach. There is a way to reach that woman's heart too. Amen. You got to figure it out. Hallelujah. Amen. Nobody want to say how that. You got to figure it out. Amen. We have two couples here who are waiting to get married. Amen. Amen. They know, I guess by now they have figured it out, how to reach each, each other's heart. Uh, yes. Amen. You're not, no kidnapping happening, right? <laughs> Amen. You, that's what, when you are looking forward to have a desire, especially teenagers as you grow up, there are so many things that's going to be thrown at you. I mean, everyone is having that. Everyone is doing that, having a cell phone, right? Our kids come up and say, Law, my, my parents, uh, my friends have kid, cell phones. Why don't I have a cell phone? And they're still asking it. And I'm like, okay, you got to wait for it. Commit your way to the Lord, amen? Commit your way to the Lord. What is the way of the Lord? Honor your father and mother, Amen. Wait for their choice. Amen. Wait under them. Live under them. That's what Jesus did. Commit your way to the Lord. If you look at David's life, David was running away from Shaul. Amen. I'm going a little quick. You will have to run with me. Amen. David was running from Shaul. And it says in, in 1 Samuel chapter 23, verse 7, Saul was told that David had gone to Kilia. And Saul said, God has delivered him into my hand, for he has shut himself in by entering a town that has gates and bars. And as David is getting chased by Saul, he gets out of the place, he goes to another place. Amen. Now guys, listen, children, listen, kids, listen. So this is amazing. This is like, this is a uh, story that happens there. It's a dramatic chase and escape that happens in 1 Samuel chapter 23 verses 25 and 26 it says Saul and his men went to seek him and they told David therefore he went to the rock and stayed in the wilderness of Moan and when Saul heard that he pursued David into the wilderness of Maon uh, then verses 26 says then Saul went to the other, went on the other side of the mountain and David and his men on the other side of the mountain one side and the other side of the mountain so David made haste to get away from Saul for Shaul and his men were encircling David and his men to take them. I mean, this is an amazing, dramatic chase. Like, you know, when uh, I thought it was, there was a mountain in between them. So they were like running away like that. But when I went back and studied, it's not a mountain. They're, they are on a mountain and there's a huge valley between them. Okay. There's a huge valley between them. And on one side is Shaul and his men running. And the other side is... David and his men running. Amen. Can you just imagine that picture in your mind? Amen. It's like a movie scene, right? 
Amen. It was already happened. All these things have already happened. But now the movies are picking it up and they're chasing it. And this is exactly, and they can see each other. Amen. Just imagine they can see each other. Shaul is watching David and David, they are watching them. And they're both running away and trying to get out. And it says Shaul was closing in on them. Amen. Shaul was closing in on them. David and his men are trying to get away. And they can see each other far off and they are trying. Can you just imagine the situation? And this is not about a transaction of money or something. This is about life and death. Amen? This is about exactly life and death. This is like a perfect movie scene. They're running. They're on horsebacks. They're running away from each other trying to get away. Amen? Can you just imagine the anxiety? If you see this scene, you, your heart will start pumping. Right? If you see some movie or something and this, you see this scene, your heart will start pumping and it's like, get away, run, 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 run. And that is exactly what is happening here. David is being chased so badly by Shaul. And you know what? The ch next chapter we read, the, after some couple of chapters, David, David survives that chase, that he escapes that. And in 1 Samuel chapter 26, verses 27, here is its story where David and Abishai, his commander, come to the people by night and there is Shaul lay sleep within the camp with a spear stuck in the ground by his head and Abner and the people lay all around him. And then Abishai said to David, The Lord has delivered your enemy into your hand this day. Now therefore please let me strike him once with the spear right into the ground and I will not have to strike him a second time. But David said to Abishai, do not destroy him. For who can stretch out his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? And David said, furthermore, as the Lord lives, the Lord shall strike him or his day shall come to die or he shall go out to battle and perish. The Lord forbid that I should stretch out my hand against the Lord's anointed. But please now take the spear and the jug of water that are by his head, and let us go. Amen? If you see this, this is not the first time that David is leaving Shaul. This is actually the second and maybe third. And here is the portion. We just saw Shaul was chasing after him. He said that the Lord has given him into my hands. I'm going to kill him. And over the next time we see Shaul is lying down on the floor and here is David by his command. And his commander says, this is the day that the Lord has given him. Let's just finish him off here. And, the, and David says, Lord forbid that. Amen. What he did is that he has a shepherd in front of him. And it's like, I'm not in pursuit of this. Amen. I am not going to do this. I'm going to let the Lord do his work. Amen. Amen. David decided that it is not he who is going to kill Shaul, but he committed his way to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Remember, David never went looking for the throne. Amen. David was never looking for the throne. The anointing came in search of him. Amen. Anointing came in search of him. He was in the forest. He was in the jungle. And in the, Samuel said, unless he comes, we are not going to sit down. Praise the Lord. Unless he comes, you are not going to sit down. Goodness and mercy shall follow me. And that's what happened. I mean, he never went searching for it. And what happened? The anointing came searching. And he says, the one that, uh, that came searching for me, and if that is the Lord who gave it, the Lord will give it to me. I don't have to fight for it. Praise the Lord. I'm committing my way to the Lord. If this is what the Lord has given me, I am not going to get into that entanglement and get it by my life and get it by my choice and get it by my desires. I'm going to let the Lord bring it the way He wants to bring it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Even at that place. Amen. They were, he was running away from Shaul. But here is a place. He's in complete peace making a right choice. Amen. Praise Lord. Church, when you are at the crossroads and when you think like something is within your reach and if you don't stretch forth your hand and take it, it's going to go away from you forever. 
Amen. And you have to do something to get it. You have to put your hand inside and get it. This may be your last chance. Look to the Lord. Because the Lord is the one who is your shepherd. Amen. He's the Alpha and the Omega. And that's why David says, Lord, search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. And know me. Know my anxieties. Try me and know my anxieties. And then when you go for an interview, what happens? You sit in front of the interviewer and the interviewer asks some couple of questions. Right? What is he doing? He's searching in you something. Right? He's looking in you something. He's asking you questions to see like, if you are able to do the job that he is going to give you. If you're, if you're capable enough to do that. They're interviewing you. They're talking to you. They're asking you questions. And David is doing the same thing. He's going sitting in front of God and says, Lord, search me, Lord. Search me and know me. And man, that's exactly what should our prayer be. It is a dialogue that we have with our God. I know some of you have come up and said, like, Pastor, we have been starting. We started praying. We started spending time with God as a family. We started reading and we started meditating. Church, that is the most blessed thing that you do every day. Amen. Because when you're sitting in the presence of God, you're letting God search you and you're talking to God and letting him know your thoughts. Amen. Sitting in the presence of God. Sitting in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. I also heard people going into prayer and they get anxious more. Amen. Now that is wrong. If you are going to pray and you come back anxious, that is a wrong thing that you're doing. You're not supposed to get anxious after your prayer. Amen. Why? Why you're not supposed to get anxious? Because once you're in the prayer, you just tell the Lord and sit there calmly and place your burden at the presence of God. Amen. And say, God, this is my desire. This is my want. This is the regret. This is the pain. This is, this is, my, this is my anger. This is my lust. This is my jealousy. This is all that I have. And Lord, I keep it in front of you and say, Lord, search me and you know my anxieties. And take it away. Amen. I mean, if you had a fight with your spouse, that's the time to give it in the presence of God and say, God, when I get up from here, I'm not going to think anything wrong against my spouse, but I'm going to go back and love my spouse just like you want me to. Praise the Lord. When you, are, when you come back from the office and you have certain things that you have carried on from the office, you go into the presence of God and say, God, search me, Lord, and know my anxieties. I, wanna, I want you to know, let the Lord know my anxieties. And give it to him. Because when you give that, there is a peace that you receive from him. And that's when you start your life again. Amen. A new start. A new blessing. And it helps in your health. Amen. You have good health with that too. Amen. Don't think about the future that you could have, you could have made it. Amen. God is the one who makes future. Amen. Amen. If you see. If you see, there was Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 27, 1. David said in, his, said in his heart, Now I shall perish someday by the hand of Shaul. And when David was running so much, he came to a point that he thought like, God, I think I'm going to die. Amen? Because Shaul is not dying, that means he's still pursuing me. And I think he's going to kill me. Praise the Lord. But you know what? His son Ecclesiastes, right when he wrote Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1, he said, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Amen. And in, we're coming down to the same chapter in verses 11. It says that God had made everything beautiful in his time. Amen. God makes everything beautiful in his time. Are you ready to wait for the Lord? Amen. God can only work for you if you are committing your ways to the Lord. Amen? Amen? That future that you were longing for. Amen? That, lo that job that, or maybe whatever it was in your dream. I'm, not, I'm just putting job. Maybe it is like getting married. As, as teenagers, as you go to college, like you see like uh, as some, some of you are like, you know, as you're growing up, you think, okay, everyone is getting admission. I'm not getting admission. And then you go, okay, everyone is having a boyfriend. Everyone is having a girlfriend. I don't have one. And then you may go further and say, okay, everyone is getting a job and I'm not getting one. Amen. And you may, everyone is getting married. I'm not getting married. And like, you know, all those questions that would come into your mind, you got to commit it to the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Commit it to the Lord. Amen. Do not go and try to get things your way. Amen. Commit it to the Lord. Say, Lord, how you want. Because the Lord promised He will make all things beautiful. Praise the Lord. 
He will make all things beautiful. I know some of you carry this testimony with you. Amen? I know that. I know. I have heard your testimony. It's powerful. He will make all things beautiful. Amen. In, in Psalm chapter 118, he says, The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Hallelujah. It was the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice in it and be glad. Praise the Lord. Amen. Just imagine you may be at the bottom of the basket, but remember the Lord reaches his hand to the bottom of the, and t- bottom of the basket and picks the one from the bottom because he saw that one which was committed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Has it ever happened to you that the Lord reaches to the bottom of the basket and picks you from there? Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And then David was there. He was rejected by his family, rejected by his kingdom, rejected by everyone. But the Lord reaches to the bottom of the basket, picks him up and says, hey, here you are. Amen. And then David, if he wanted to fight Shaul, he could have fought Shaul. Because he's the guy who fought Goliath. Amen. He was not afraid to face Goliath. If he wanted to do it, he could have fought Shaul. But he won't because he committed his way to the Lord. Praise the Lord. He had complete peace when he's standing in front of Shaul and he has the complete opportunity to kill him. No, he has the peace. No, I'm completely peaceful at this time. No anxious thoughts. No anxious thoughts. When I'm following God, I have no anxious thoughts. Jesus said in Luke chapter 14 verses 10, but when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that he who invited you come and may say to your friend, go up higher. Then you will have the glory in the presence of those who sit at the table with you. Amen. Jesus saying, be con- not, not content for the best, but rather settle for the least. Amen. Settle for where you have peace. Amen. Amen. Settle for where you have peace. If I get peace, by just by settling for this much, I'll just settle for that. I don't want to fight for more and create more anxiety and create more tension because I'm going to believe the Lord is my shepherd and he has met my need in this much. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to believe that the Lord is my shepherd and he has met my need. I'm not going to worry about what I'm missing out in my life. I mean, that's what Jesus said. Start with the least because... In, in, then, then he says, then he will lift you up. In First Peter chapter 5, verses 9, Peter said, Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so at the proper time he may exalt you. Hallelujah. And then he says, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Can we say it together? Casting all your anxieties on him. For he cares for you. Amen. Amen. How many of you are ready to cast out, cast your anxieties at the Lord? Amen. Casting all your anxieties. Throw it away. Amen. Throw it away today. Amen. Be content for what God has given you. Be, be, be happy with the word blessing that God has given you. Amen. Amen. You may think that you're at the bottom of the basket, but the Lord sees you even there. Hallelujah. His eyes is searching for those who are committed to him. His eyes are looking throughout the earth to see the ones he can pick up and the ones he can use. Amen. Church, when he does that, it will be the same story. That chief, the stone that the builders rejected has been become the chief cornerstone and this is the lord's doing hallelujah this is the lord's doing it's not my talent it's not my ability but this is the lord's doing and in this i rejoice judge i can say like you know if you really want to become something you can become that amen a little more hard work a little more practice a little more training a little more research you can become that right yes or no Yes, you can become the best version of yourself. Amen? I mean, if you want to be an athlete, you can become that. You, can, you, just, you have to wake up every, every, mo- every day at 4 o'clock and start running and doing things like that and do it every day and you will become that. You want to be an instrumentalist, you practice every day 7 hours and you will become that. Amen? But just think that you don't have the opportunity but then you are at the bottom of the basket and you didn't have those things that came to you but then God still picks you up from there and puts you into a pedestal that you never thought 
Amen. Paul, when he writes to Romans, he says, What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And then he says, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Amen. Shall he not with him give us all things? Amen. What is anxiety for? What is the anxiety for? for the, what are the new wants that you carry in your life? Church, can we just give ourselves into the presence of God and say, God, use, use me, Lord. I'm simple. I just want to be content like David is content. Just want to settle for the things that you have given me and believe that, that you're going to work wonders in this situation of my life. Yes, Lord, I'm going to believe that. I'm going to trust you for everything. I mean, my job, my family, my kids. I mean, I'm going to believe in you, Lord, for whatever you have given me. I'm not going to be anxious about what I don't have. I'm not going to be worried about, about things that I'm still working for. I'm just going to settle myself and commit my ways to the Lord. Amen. Jesus said, do not worry, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. He says that. He says that. Church, can we stand to our feet?